The idea of combining the automobile with the airplane is no longer a fantasy. What do you think of that, huh? I got to tell you something, that's pretty cool. Celebrated by news media around the world as the modern-day flying car, the transition represents a safer and more practical approach to personal air travel. The aircraft have looked essentially the same for the past 50 years. Transition really is the next step in the evolution of aircraft. The transition can convert between flying and driving almost instantly. You just get in the cockpit, push a couple buttons, and the wings fold up. Although it has been dubbed a flying car, the transition is really an airplane that can legally and safely be driven on roads and highways and parked in your single car garage. The transition's a really fun flying car to drive. It's got a lot of power, it's got a well-tuned suspension, it's very responsive. That was great. The transition flies like a really nice airplane. I've flown 20 to 30 different airplanes in my career, and the transition is by far the easiest airplane to land. It's smooth, controllable, and very stable. With all the data we collected from the proof of concept aircraft, in combination with these sophisticated design and performance modeling tools, we've been able to really optimize the design of the next generation transition. The beauty of this design is really how simple it is. With four-wheel independent suspension, a wide track, a long wheelbase, and a relatively low center of gravity to provide really good stability and handling when you're driving on the road. The transition has a lot of potential to make life a lot less stressful and a lot more fun. The transition is a game changer for pilots because now you're not just thinking about your trip as going from airport to airport, but going from your home to your final destination. After a century of talk, the world is finally ready for a flying car. Check out the transition now and explore why we're driven to fly. Joining me now uh, is the co-founder, chief operating officer of Terrafugia, Anna Dietrich. Anna, welcome. Thank you, Craig. It's great to be back here. Thank you for being with us. Well, I, I, we all watched this uh, this wonderful uh, video and uh, the notion of a flying car or as I think you say the rotable airplane is one that aviation enthusiasts have uh, dreamed of and imagined for a long time and of course there have been attempts to do this in the past but Terrafugia the tr uh, has given us something that uh, makes this look very much like reality. Well, thank you. I, I guess I have to ask you to, right off to start is what were you thinking? What, how did you believe you could actually make this happen? Well, myself and the other co-founders of the company, we met while we were in graduate school at MIT, and we're all private pilots, and we're all sort of used to the things that you put up with as a private pilot, the lack of mobility at your destination airport. I mean, sometimes you want to just go to the airport, but usually not. Um, the weather sensitivity, getting stranded, especially in New England, you know, our weather isn't as nice there as it is here, clearly. So, right. you know, those sort of hassles of, you know, that make flying not something you can just go and do and have a good time with and be able to be back to work on Monday. So we looked at that. We looked at the light sport rule that came out in 2004, and we said, you know, we can do something about this. We can create a product that will let you treat flying the same way that you treat getting in your car and going somewhere, only now you can go farther and you can have more fun doing it. So, I mean, what are people telling you? How do you envision owners actually uh, using this aircraft? Well, we have uh, folks that have placed reservations for production that have visions for the transition that are way beyond what we could have imagined initially, and that's really exciting for us. Uh, some of the anecdotes that I like to, to talk about, people that I know, one of them is a lawyer in Florida who has clients all over the state, so he's going to be able to visit three or four clients in a day where today he could only visit one, maybe two on a good day, so that's going to really help his business. But the things that I really like to hear the most about are the folks that are going to use it to travel as their adventure vehicle, to visit their grandchildren, to really see their, their country and their world in a new way and more conveniently. So it sounds like you're really working on, again, bringing new people into aviation who might not have really considered it before. Yes, yeah, we, we heard earlier about 30, you know, 35 percent of, of ICON's customers are not pilots. Our, we are the exact same Sweet. way. And I think that's really exciting, and I think that speaks to the power of life sport to bring people into aviation and the power of an innovative look at aviation for something that you know, addresses the challenges that if you're already a pilot, you're kind of used to, you've kind of gotten over that. But if you're on the fence, if you're looking at aviation, um, this is something that makes it more accessible. Like, oh, yeah, I, I want to do that. I want to be part of that. I, I can see myself in that aircraft, and that's something we're seeing with the transition. Now, every, every aircraft has lots of different kinds of trade-offs. 
and probably among those that are most fundamental are weight. Yes. And the light sport category has certain weight requirements, but you've worked with the FAA to give you a little more flexibility there. Am I right about that? That's correct, yes. Compromises are everywhere in engineering, and particularly when you're trying to combine two sort of disparate modes of transportation. Cars like to be very stable and, and heavy and safe and with all sorts of crash protection built into them. Airplanes like to be light and they like to fly. Um, so we've had to find a number of creative ways of combining those two things. Uh, we've used a lot of composite materials and a lot of innovative design to merge those two worlds very successfully. But there were still some things that we had to incorporate for safety that are really new to the aviation world. Um, crumple zone structure, safety cage around the passengers, um, automotive style airbags and seatbelts. Things that we take for granted in our car but aren't really in light aviation today. The FAA uh, worked with us to give us an additional 110 pounds in the light sport category. So as a rotable, we now have the same weight limit as the amphibs. And that lets us include those automotive safety features into the aircraft without compromising your useful load and the performance of the aircraft. Right. So, I mean, what? Um, give, give me an idea of what you could pack into this then. With uh, what is that useful load? Well, it's still a light like. sport airplane. Right. You're still about 460 pounds. You know, so you're not going to be packing in your luggage for a two-week getaway. But you know, you carry on luggage. Um, you know, we have space for golf clubs, things like that. I so. say that range. Sort of how how far could I Just go? Just under this? 500 miles. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That gets you around. And about how high? How what's out? Well, as Look you're familiar, sport the... pilots are at the 10,000 foot limit. If you're flying right. as a sport pilot, the aircraft itself, uh, the ceiling will be between about 12 and 14,000 feet. We're still doing some of that testing. That's neat. That's neat. And um, time frame, you mentioned testing. I mean, how, how are you coming in this process? Things are moving along sort of fast and furious right now. It's a very exciting time for us. Uh, as uh, any of you who've been by our exhibit here at Long Beach know, we have a proof of concept aircraft here which completed its flight testing in 2009. So we did flight and drive testing with that aircraft a little while ago. We're now building a pair of production prototypes in our new low volume production facility outside of Boston. And uh, those should be ready for testing the first part of next year. And if everything continues to stay on schedule, uh, we should be getting our first delivery out by the end of next year. That's exciting. And there's some talk of maybe what comes next, next generation. Are you thinking about that along the way too? We Want to are. drop any hints? <laughs> well, it's probably the, the worst kept secret in aviation right now that DARPA has launched a program to develop what's basically a flying Humvee um, right. for special forces and, and military operations, medevac, things like that. Right. And it's a very exciting opportunity for us to take the expertise that we've built around combining ground safety and ground drive with a flying vehicle. So we're one of um, the main subcontractors on a team. We're a team member for uh, developing one of these aircraft for DARPA, our, our prime contractor is AAI Corporation's Textron company. So right. we're very proud to be part of that, and hopefully some of the expertise that we've gained from the general aviation world can be applied to help serve our, our military forces. Well, that's exciting. I mean, you, it, it's wonderful to have one of the great creative thinkers in the general aviation community with us. Uh, you come at it from a different perspective. What do you, what do you see as you look forward the next uh, few years? For our, for our general aviation community. I think we're at a very exciting time right now. I think we have the opportunity to take the new, uh, the new designs, the new innovations, really on every front, and uh, you know, sort of pull ourselves together and, and come out of the, the little reception that we've, we've seen ourselves in and move forward and be even stronger for it, bring new people in, really share the passion that we have, share the new technologies that are being developed, and take things to the next level. You know, I, uh, I know we're all going to be excited to watch, uh, watch this go forward. Where do you... Uh, where do people get a chance to see this aircraft fly? Well, we're hoping, and I don't want to make too many firm promises, but we are hoping that we'll be able to fly uh, publicly at Oshkosh this summer. Wow, that's exciting. So there's exciting. a lot of things, including New England weather, that has to cooperate for that to happen, but that's our hope right now. And, and uh, where's the company based? Where, what, where's the group? We're in Woburn, Massachusetts. It's okay. one of the Boston suburbs. Yeah, good. And uh, is this a team you've put together from kind of multiple sources? Or have you been together a long time? Or? We have been together for quite a while at this point now, but we continue to bring new people in, new skills to the mix. Um, I mentioned earlier, I was met the other co-founders while we were in graduate school at MIT, so we have a good MIT base. Uh, most of the company are, are pilots. Uh, but we have expertise from everything from composite boat building uh, through military pilots, so it's a good mix. That's great, and, uh, and, uh, and how, so how are you spending a lot of your time? I mean, uh, is it the founder job uh, obviously has evolved over uh, It definitely some time. has evolved. I always joke that as chief operating officer, I do everything that no one else wants to do. Um, but I, I have a fantastic team that supports me and supporting us here at the exhibit. So really would not be able to do this without any one of the group. So it's, it's really fantastic. That's neat. Well, it's, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, we certainly do look forward to uh, 
get, getting the chance to see this aircraft uh, in Oshkosh. Uh, you're welcome to bring it to Hartford, not too far away. Uh, we're, we're with uh, in this, at the summit next year in, in Connecticut. But uh, we, we really all wish you the very best. Um, this, is, uh, th this is something to, to watch, and you're adding so much to our community. If you uh, want to take a look and learn more, I guess you're at booth uh, 919, they That's tell correct. me. That's correct. And for those of you watching at home, our website is driventofly.com, and we'll be posting uh, progress of these upcoming tests and uh, future show um, appearances online as well. Well, I... Uh, you know, I think that uh, all of us are going to want to keep uh, keep close watch on what you're doing. Anna, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Please walk. Please thank her. <laughs>